What's up guys? I want to talk to you today about solar panels. So if you're deciding that maybe you want to go that route, uh, hopefully I can kind of help you decide if that's something that you really want to do or not. So I'm uh, going to tell you what I've done and kind of what the problems I've had and then you can kind of base it off of that, whether or not you want to go that route. Uh, all the keyboard warriors out there that's going to be hating on the old Wheelmeister, I'm not a professional, so cut me some slack. Uh, I've only had it been going for a little while, so I'm still learning as I go. Uh, also, guys, you may have noticed that the channel has changed. Got a new name, new logo, new banner, all that good stuff. Uh, just kind of needed to revamp the channel, and uh, I've kind of been going a different route with it than what I started originally with it, so uh, I'm just kind of trying to go to more towards the, the route that I'm going now. So Anyway, if you're watching this on Facebook, Kick over to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. Uh, it'll really help out and I really appreciate it. So anyway, um, the solar panels. Well, I built a tiny house about two years ago and I went 100% off the grid with it. Now, when you go off the grid, that means you're not tied into the electric company. You're on your own little system down there. Now, you can go grid tie. Uh, that means you've got a system and it's tied into your main panel. So... You don't have batteries though, so you've got everything that you would have on an off-grid system except for the batteries because you still need everything, but now instead of the batteries feeding the house, now you're feeding directly into the panel and the panel's still feeding the house. So all it does basically is alleviate some of your cost per month that you're having with your with your regular system where you're tied into the electric company. So say for example, you normally pay $200 a month, uh, that grid tie system maybe can bring it down like half or even more on, on certain days and stuff like that. So uh, you'll get credit on your account, stuff like that, uh, and you'll get money back. Now, if you wanna go grid tie, you can do batteries and generator and stuff. That way when the power goes out, you still have power. Because with the grid tie, if you don't have batteries, uh, even though you're, you've got solar panels and you're on a grid tie system, when the power goes out, that goes out as well because there's just nothing there to keep it fed. The, the grid tie solar panels only work when the sun's out uh, and it only works off of your, your uh, initial system. So confusing, I know, but uh, just know if you go grid tie and your power goes out, your power is still going to go out. Whereas if you're completely off the grid and everybody else's power is out, you still got power. So the system that I have down there, uh, we've got eight solar panels, eight batteries, inverter boxes, breaker boxes, all that good stuff. It's completely set up. Uh, got about $10,000 in that system, which I don't think that's bad. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that's probably got a system that's a lot cheaper. There's a lot of DIY gals, guys out there. Uh, they're way smarter than a wheel here and they're able to figure out a lot of stuff that I, my little brain just can't process. Uh, so 10 grand I think is probably about average. There's a lot of systems out there that are way more than 10 grand but like I said it's just a small house. It's a small system uh, and it does pretty good for what we've got. So at 10 grand, if your electric payment is $200 a month, you'll have it paid off in about five years, which isn't terrible. But just know that you're always going to have like maintenance fees and stuff. So even during that five years, you're going to have upkeep on the batteries, you're going to have upkeep on the solar panels and stuff like that. And then after that five years, you're still going to have upkeep on the system. So there may be stuff that you have to buy and put back into the system. So even though we've got 10 grand in our system, uh, there's still stuff that we've had to do over the last couple years to, to get the system up to snuff and keep it running properly. So uh, it's always going to be a cost on that. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now, Electricity from an off-the-grid system works off of phototons from the sun. So what that means is the sun releases phototons. Those hit the solar panels. The solar panels send electricity to the batteries. The batteries charge up and then your house runs off the battery. So your house doesn't run off of the solar panels. Your house runs off of the batteries. So say for example, you've got a cloudy day. Uh, 
the phototons that come off the sun aren't coming through those clouds like they would on a, on a clear day. So you're not getting that full power that you could be getting from the sun. So your batteries just aren't going to charge properly that day. Obviously, if your solar panels are covered in snow, you're not going to get anything from that. Uh, shade. So like if you've got some trees in the area and the sun's coming over, maybe it's in the shade part of the day and then in the sun and then in the shade again so the solar panels aren't getting the full power of the sun on the full range of motion of the sun. So uh, that's going to cause you a loss of electricity going to those batteries and keeping those charged up. If you mow a lot in that area, uh, the solar panels can get dusty and dirty and they're just not going to perform properly. They're, they're going to uh, underperform and they're not going to charge the batteries up properly. So just know that that can have an effect on that as well. Also, what you might not know and that I have recently found out is that solar panels can get too hot. So anything above 90 degrees, I don't care if it's the most beautiful sunny day in the world, anything above 90 degrees the solar panels aren't as efficient as what they could be. So I haven't found a code temperature that affects them. The only thing maybe with the code is if they frost over or something. But I if it's sunny, they don't. They actually like staying cool. Um, they don't like getting hot. It's kind of like the motor in your vehicle. Once it starts getting hot, it just doesn't want to perform well, and those solar panels are no different. And the same can be said for the batteries. Um, the batteries, they are temperature sensitive as well. So just like the battery in your vehicle when it's really cold and you go to start it, uh, it doesn't want to start, the batteries for your solar panel system are the same way. So when it starts getting really cold, those batteries start getting drained uh, and they don't want to be as efficient as what they could be on normal temperature. So. Uh, you know, there's a lot that goes on with an off-the-grid system that's just will drive you nuts. It's, it can be too cold for the batteries, it can be too hot for the solar panels, it can be cloudy, it can be rainy, uh, the shadows, even the, the fires from California that they had several weeks back, just the smoke coming over here from that that we really couldn't see or, or, or smell or taste or breathe. Uh, it was in the atmosphere enough to where it actually blocked a lot of the phototons from hitting the solar panels properly and the batteries didn't charge like they needed to be. So very, very frustrating to be 100% off the grid. Uh, now, now, like I said, you've got so much with off the grid. You've got solar panels, you've got wiring. Uh, the solar panels have to be built on a frame. So that costs money. Um, your charge controllers, your breakers, your batteries, all that has to be in a building. Uh, the building has to be insulated. The batteries have wires themselves. There's wires running from the solar panels to the batteries. There's wires running. All that whole stuff in your building's got wires. There's wires running in your house. So uh, the wires get very expensive. You got surge protectors. You got inverter boxes. So all that adds up and it all gets very expensive. So before you know it, uh, like I said, you can be in 10 grand uh, like that and still not be able to use it on a daily basis because of certain factors that come into play. So what we've got down there is we've got a backup generator. Um, with a backup generator, you're going to run into issues as well. The generator uses gas, so you've got to have gas jugs. You've got to have a way to go get gas, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to be running back and forth to the gas station getting gas. You've got to have a, some kind of a building or a shed for that generator so it's just not out in the open. Plus you've got wires. So all the wires you have running from your solar panel to your system, now your generator has got wires running from it to your system to charge your batteries as well. Generators are loud, they're noisy, uh, very irritating. Now the generator that we have, it runs off of propane. So we have propane that heats that house. So instead of us having to do the gas run, the propane, excuse me, goes directly into the generator and runs the house that way. So it's a lot more convenient like that. Also, you can get stuff that once the batteries start getting down to a certain level, you can have the generator kick on because 
Once you run those batteries dead two or three times, you've run every battery. So you do not want to run those batteries down to a certain percentage or you will run those batteries. And those batteries are about three or $400 a piece. So batteries are very expensive. So you can have it to where once your system starts getting down to a certain percentage, the generator automatically kicks on. And then you can have it set up to where when the batteries build back up during the day, the generator will shut off. And that's the way we've got our setup. So we've constantly got power down there nonstop 24 seven when we need it. So. Anyway, guys, <coughs> excuse me. Um, if you're wanting to go completely off the grid, huge learning curve. Watch a ton of videos. Uh, get as much knowledge and information as you can, and just know that it's going to be a daily grind and it's going to be a life changing experience. Uh, grid tie, like I said, once we do the main house here on solar, it's going to be a grid tie system. Uh, I definitely would recommend grid tie if you're thinking about kind of going the solar system route but anyway guys i just want to do a quick video today on solar system a lot of people are kind of going that route and a lot of people may have questions so uh if you want to ask me something i'll do the best i can to try to answer it but just know that a will here ain't the smartest cat out there uh i do the best i can and i and i get by with with the little brain power that i have but i'll try to help you any way i can so anyway guys that's it i'll catch you on the next video peace out